So what is your name? Hi, I'm Richard Garriott. And what is your profession? When uh, I'm here on Earth, my profession is I'm a computer game developer. And what, uh, what would we know you for? What computer games would we know you for? I'm probably best known for a fantasy role-playing series of the 80s and 90s called Ultima. You've been on a lot of adventures in your life. Can you name a few of them? You know, of course, the grandest adventure has, for me has been spaceflight, but uh, I'm no stranger to big adventures here on Earth. I've uh, made multiple journeys down to some of the deepest parts of the sea uh, on deep submersibles. I've uh, been twice uh, to the interior of Antarctica on meteorite hunting expeditions. And I've even spent a fair bit of time uh, in the jungles and rivers of uh, places like uh, South America and Africa as well. So who is your father? My father is Owen Garriott. He has flown twice in space. He first flew on Skylab 2 and then also on the ninth launch of the space shuttle. Can you tell me how you uh, arranged your space flight? Well, fortunately for me, I was not alone in being sort of an orphan of the Apollo era uh, in desiring to find a way to fly privately. And uh, 10 or 12 years ago, I heard of Space Adventures and Space Adventures managed to arrange uh, chartered flights with the Russian Soyuz. And in 2008, I finally achieved my dream of uh, launching from Earth and living for two weeks on the space station. Where did you train for your space flight? Just outside of Moscow, there is a Russian training facility known as uh, Star City or the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center. And I spent uh, many months there, uh, you know, training for my flight. And what did you enjoy most about the training? The training is a phenomenal experience all the way around. In fact, uh, uh, I enjoyed every aspect of the training. Uh, you know, to get a chance to learn how to operate uh, the life support and the radios and uh, experiments on board was really just a, a thrill. Uh, but probably, if I had to pick one, it would be the launch and re-entry uh, portions of the flight, which are both the most exciting uh, as well as have the most interesting activities to do. And how long did you spend in space? And I stayed in space uh, almost two weeks. And where did you stay while you're in space? Well, for the first two days in space, I lived aboard the Soyuz vehicle that I launched in, Soyuz TMA-13. After about 48 hours, we docked with the International Space Station. And for the remaining uh, remainder of my time, the majority, the majority of that time, I lived on the space station. I actually uh, camped out, you might say, in you know, one of the forward modules. What did you do while you were in space? Well, I did a fairly broad combination of educational activity, uh, some fundamental research projects, as well as some commercial activity in space as well. And what was the most memorable part of your experience? You know, without question, the uh, uh, looking out the window back of the Earth um, was by far the most profound, you know, part of the experience. You know, as as exciting as launch and reentry and floating around like you know in zero g like Superman all day every day, uh, those are all very wonderful. But looking out the window back of the Earth for a period of time, you know, every moment you look out the window, you're sort of getting this wonderful, expansive but high resolution view about how the Earth operates, how weather and erosion and tectonic plates movements have affected the surface of the Earth, and also how humanity has affected the surface of the Earth. And so it's like a fire hose of the truth of, of the world in which we live that is just pouring into your mind. Do you think it's important for private citizens to fly to space? I do. You know, uh, in fact, Alan Bean, who is uh, one of the astronauts who walked on the moon, as well as uh, he flew on Skylab with my father, sent me a really kind letter after he heard uh, about my announcement to fly, where he noted that, uh, his, uh, that my father and himself were hired like most astronauts because they're either great test pilots or great scientists, not because they're great communicators. And he said, uh, with you being not only a private citizen, uh, but especially because uh, you know, my business is uh, largely a communications-related business, he said, uh, you, you, know, you will relate space to the general public in a way that is very different, very importantly different than the way your father and I did. Uh, and so I agree with that comment. I think private citizens flying not only provides great uh, opportunity to show what it's like for private citizens, which is hopefully going to be everyone will get this opportunity, um, but I think that uh, we're 
uh, very good uh, representatives of that experience in a way that professional astronauts uh, often wouldn't be. And did your spaceflight experience change you in any way? Absolutely. You know, um, prior to my flight, I would already have described myself as an environmentalist. But uh, looking out the window back at the Earth from space over a period of time um, really changes you at a very deep level. And, uh, you know, seeing how those deep systems of the Earth work and humanity's place within them, uh, I think it's impossible not to come back, as I did, uh, feeling uh, reinvigorated and refocused on living a lifestyle that is more of an environmental example uh, than just, uh, you know, talking the talk uh, like I was more prone to do prior to my flight. Would you fly to space again? I would fly to space any day they would let me. And what's next in your mind for the industry of commercial space flight? Well, to me, one of the most important uh, changes that's you know, coming here in the next uh, few years or decade or so is uh, a combination of both uh, frequency and methods of access to space, as well as along with that should come uh, a cost reduction in that access to space. And the things that are important about that are multifold. And in particular, I think that, uh, you know, the day we finally get to the point where the amount of money you can earn by doing some work in space is greater than the cost of a trip to space, then I think there's going to be a huge explosion of entrepreneurial activity in space. And you know the day I can do that, I'm going every chance I can get.